Welcome back everybody to another flight simulation video. Today we are in Microsoft Flight Simulator or FS 2020 as most people have begun to call it. I'm going to do something just a little bit different on the channel. We're going to do some GA. I don't really do that. Been more of a tube liner guy, I guess, for my whole flight sim career. So why not try something difficult for me? And this is um, bush flying doing bush trips these are vfr only so you have to look at uh landmarks and whatnot to try to find your way around um and they're very lengthy so we're gonna do a series on them uh so we're gonna start with this one here the breckenridge to mariposa yosemite and this is gonna be in the savage cub as you can see in the background here no autopilot in Savage Cub, so it's all hand flying and things like that. So this is our first leg. This is where we're going to end up. It's about 63 miles away, about 41 minutes, roughly. Uh, the whole tour, if you look here, it's about 856 nautical miles. There's 25 total legs for hmm, about nine and a half to 10 hours of flying. And that's if you don't get lost or do any sightseeing or whatever. So, yeah. We'll see. I don't know. I'm sure I'm gonna get lost at some point. Um, but all right, well let's uh that's enough talking, so let's just get started. Okay, so he we loaded up in the sim. Uh we are in the Savage Cub right now is cold and dark. We'll get this going. Uh, but before we do that, let's check out what kind of navigation aids and, and things we have for this trip. So if you go up here to your, um, I guess your shortcuts bar or whatever, you can see there's not a whole lot on there. Um, they've disabled a lot of stuff, the ATC, the checklist, which I don't know why they would get rid of checklist because, you know, but whatever. Basic controls is on, is fine, but no fuel, no AI control, no objectives, no travel to. So all we have the options for VFR map, our nav log and our camera so what we're going to do now is just check our vfr map and you can see we're not on here so we can't use this as um, a way to help us to get places so i'm going to click that part of the map on so we can see the different levels here but basically we're going to have to this is our route that we're going to take and this is our first stop right here how are we going to get there? Well, look at this a little bit. So we're going to take off. We're right here. We're going to take off. And then we're going to kind of go to a north, kind of hang a right to a, like a northeasterly heading. And we're going to look for this river here. And we are just going to follow the river. Follow the river until we get up to this lake. Which is right here. And then when we get to the lake, we're going to go to the east and follow this river. Until this spot right here. This spot is tricky because you got to pay attention as the river continue turns to go north. We've got to go east. More easterly. And it's kind of, I guess it's like a valley between these two mountain ridges. And then once we pop out of there, here's the uh, airport. Now, to help us along the way, we've got the nav log. So the nav, nav log, this is kind of where, this is where we're at, and this is where we're going. 63 miles away, about 41 minutes. And they've got a kind of a little helper tip here, kind of each area, your point of interest one through all the way to the airport. So, because you your rough heading, the distance, and about your time. So we, we'll start the stopwatch. But you read through here, and I've already read these, but you kind of read through here, and it gives you tips and, and tells you what you need to look out for. So we're going to follow the Kern River, and we're also going to end up following State Route 178 for most of the trip. And that's what's going to be our kind of our guides to get where we need to go. And I am using Track IR, as you can probably tell. So I love Track IR. It's really awesome and, you know, GA flying, things like that. So... All right, I think we're pretty much ready. Let's go ahead and put that away for now, and let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to reset track air here. There we go. Let's get this aircraft going. I'm going to 
pull out the choke and turn the strobe lights on. Get these ignitions going and start it up. Okay, start it up. Step on that parking brake. We don't need taxi lights because we're already on the runway. Get that going. Put the choke back in. Okay, get the RPMs going about 2,000 for right now. All right, I need to just kind of bump my head up just a little bit because I it's hard to see in these things. Okay, so, all right, so let's get out of here. Put some right rudder to get this thing to stay on the center line. Okay, taking off. All right, I'm going to fly runway heading just for a minute before we hang a right. Okay, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and make our first turn to the right. So now we are going to try to find this river and follow it. So now we have this pop-up telling us uh, completing a bush trip without using the get me back on track feature will award an achievement. So I'll show you that here in just a second. Let's straighten out. Okay, there's, there's the runway. Looking good. All right, so if I bring up the VFR map again, let's get back on track button. So if we get lost, we can click on that and it'll basically let us see our plane for a few seconds and then give us a, kind of an arrow which way we need to go or a line to get back on track, so. Okay. I don't like climbing that fast. I'm trying to trim out at 500 feet per minute. Got a town over here. And I can see some water, like right here. So there's a river coming somewhere along this way, and we're going to end up going that way with it from according on the map. So now it's just uh, a matter of trying to find it. And this is new for me, because, you know, normally when you fly tube liners, it's uh, you got your FMC, tells you where to go. And you just click autopilot. This is different. All right, so here's the big body of water. So the river is probably running this way. This is what I like track your hour. You can kind of move your head around and try to find it. Okay, there it is, right here. Looks like it's cutting through this mountain. So let's let's go outside and look. A little easier. I have a 49 inch monitor, but for YouTube videos and Twitch, I have to kind of put it down to 1080p. Or sorry, to 1920 by 1080p. So I, I lose a lot of my real estate that I normally fly with. All right, so here's the river right here. It goes this way, and this is some type of highway. Not sure if this is one uh, highway 178 or not but i look around let me see here move this around so here's the river this is what we're following and it does look like it definitely goes into in through this mountain range so that's where we're heading and very nice scenery looks really good i'm currently running on high-end settings um i do have a uh an i9 9900k overclocked to i think it's 4.6 uh 32 gigs of ram and a gtx um, 1080 ti i did set it on ultra uh running about eh, 20 to 30 frames depending on the situation um and you know it, it, it was fine but i wanted to try to get my frame rates up so i just bumped it down to default high high end and you know it's working good it still looks really good um I might end up getting one of those 3000 series GPUs. So if I do, then we'll reevaluate the settings, maybe bump to ultra at that time. But for now, I'm, I'm quite happy with this. 
And like I said, my monitor is a 49 inch monitor. It is a 1080p, it's not 1440k or, or 4k. So now, I don't know if you notice in the video, but there is a stutter that happens every few seconds and it's doesn't seem to happen when I play. It seems to happen around here. I don't know why, is this general area or this mission? I'm not sure. So right, let's, let's get back into the uh, flight deck here. All right, so we are just passing 3,000 feet, which looks to be a good, looks to be a good altitude at the moment. Let's see if I can find that river, because I need to follow it. Go over to the left. Okay, yeah, there's the river, so. I stay within, if I stay in this valley here, I, I, I'm okay with the, altitude I'm at now, but I definitely have to stay following following the river, so it's a little turbulent right now, I guess because the wind's coming from, I don't know really how it's going, but it is messing with me, so maybe you know, maybe I will just go up a little bit more so let's do a let's try to trim out for 500 feet per minute just get up just a little bit further maybe to see what 4,000 looks like River's cutting through the right here. Yep. There it is. There's a highway running next to the road. It's probably the route uh, 178 that was talked about in this in the nav log. Gonna follow the river now. We're descending. I need to pay attention to that. I didn't trim it out. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. That 3,000 feet wasn't enough. Raise my chair just a little bit. Make it a little easier to see. Man, if you had any engine issues, you don't really have a whole lot of options here. Maybe you can get down in the valley and land on the on that road, but nothing around here looks doable. There might be a there might be a spot or two where we could try to land. Need be. Now I'm not sure. So this is in the yellow, but every, this is with the you know the RPMs are in the green. This I've noticed is just stays in the yellow even when I, you know, flew it off this mission. So I, I don't know, but I'm going to stay in this yellow range. Assume it's okay, but if not, let me know in the comments below. I don't really fly this thing that often, so I don't really know how it's supposed to be.
Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna try to level off around 5,500 feet and trim for that for now. While we continue to follow the river. Let's see, I'm gonna get up. Okay, let's trim that. Right. So the next big thing we're looking for is the lake. Pop up the uh, nav log here. So Lake Isabella is what we're looking for next. And up oh, there it is right there. It's coming in view. So you're nearly out of the Kern Canyon now. After a few more twists and turns, the river will lead you past a town born during the California Gold Rush towards the heart of the Kern River Valley, Lake Isabella. So, and then the river opening, this is where we're gonna follow the lake and uh, the South Fork Kern River. So we're gonna go out, leave to the west, or to the east. Okay, so coming up on the lake. Let's go outside and take a look at it. All right, so we need to start our turn right now. And follow the uh, lake to the east. Looks like where we're going to aim for is right there. If I can see where the river's coming back in. I think they call it the South Fork, something like that. South Fork Kern River right here, the river opening. So that's where we're heading. And then the Onyx. South Fork Kern River flows past several small flatland towns, eventually leading to a riverside community bordered by two rocky outcroppings. A wide open invitation back into this Sierra Nevada mountain pass. Then we're going to let the river lead the way until we begin bending north into the mountains. It's there you'll find State Route 178 again. Follow the highway as it bends across the long stretch of cliffside and runs runs off into the south into a southeasterly direction. So, okay. That's what we're looking for. All right, so we are crossing over Lake Isabella right now. I'm just gonna follow the river until it's said, until we get close to some mountains where we're gonna have to follow the highway, Highway 1, State Route 178. Maybe we have some oddly placed buildings inside the side of the mountain. Maybe that's there in real life. I don't know. Top secret bunker building or something. A lot of farmland here. Here's the town. So if we go back to our VFR map, so we are probably right around this area following the map, following the river. We're gonna have to pay attention um, to this spot where the river <clears throat> goes north. 
So when it goes north, we have to pay attention to look for the, uh, the highway, to follow the highway to, to this valley. That'll take us ultimately to the airport. So this is the big deal. If we miss it and continue going straight, looks like these these mountains are pretty high. So and I guess if we missed it, we could fly over the mountains and turn back south to get to the uh, to the airport. So hopefully not, but that's what we're gonna have to pay attention for. Still following the river here. See it just on the uh, left of the aircraft. I'm guessing we're going to we're getting closer to where the river starts to go north, and we're going to have to make our turn to the east. southeast I should say so there's a there's a road that's probably highway 178 we might guess Some cars on there right now Uh, we need to turn and it doesn't look like it because the road is not going that way okay so all right looking at the size of these uh, mountains up here I believe this is our turn spot here our valley and I'm thinking the river goes yep you can see this way I bet you the river goes north that way so Looking at for the road. Here's the road going this way. I don't know if it's going that way. Can't tell. Yes, the road is turning this way. So I bet you that's where we gotta go. Let's look at the river. Yep. Yep, that's it. The river's going this way. So let's uh, make our turn. Follow the road. I do miss uh, police vehicles that you had like an X-plane that are cruising down the road with their lights flashing. Those always got your attention. It's kind of cool. Maybe they can add something like that in here. Some random emergency vehicles just cruising down the highway. Looks like the road is crossing in front of us here and going over to the left. Follow it. I feel like the ground is getting um lower. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go up a bit. So we're at 3,500 feet right now. Let's go up a thousand feet. And see what that like. So I have a frame rate counter on right now and that that jarring thing you're seeing is it's like the frames are stable and then it dips like five six frames and then goes right back up again 
It's so weird. It's like consistent. There's the road. There's the road. Okay, so we are coming up on 4,000 feet. 3,900. Keep going. There's the road. So we'll keep following it. Up to 4,100 feet now. like we're still hugging these mountains all on this road okay The elevation is definitely uh, increasing, so. All right. Let's check in, look at our nav here, our nav log. All right, so it's a relatively straight shot continuing southeast until Highway 178 meets State Route 14 at the long since dead ghost town of Freeman Junction. So we need to look for whatever this is. So it's at uh, 120 degrees approximately. So we'll see. I guess I should have started a stopwatch so I can kind of do the times. Oh well, it's my fault. Oh boy, not paying attention. So we're looking for a junction at a town. It's gotta be getting close because it looks like we're gonna be leaving the valley right up here. Okay, so I don't see a junction anywhere. Let's look at the VFR map again. So it looks like we're getting ready to come out of the map, this uh, valley here. So we should be going left and we should see the airport. Should be right somewhere over here. Gonna have, gonna have to start descending here shortly if that's the case. Unless this is a, unless this is the road and there's like a junction right through here or something. get back into the cockpit view raise up myself just a little bit I think that's another road maybe or it could be water actually wait a minute is that the airport oh that's the airport all right shoot we're super high let's start lower the um, lower the throttle here start descending not too worried about no junction now because we have saw the airport so and no that's that looks to be water not a junction nice all right uh, 
Um, let's see here. Got a runway going this way. We'll hit that. We'll hit that. Probably hit that runway. So we're at 5,000 feet right now. Get down pretty, pretty quick. But not super fast. So right now we're going down to about 500, about 400 feet per minute. So I'm going to turn on final now and um, drop a notch of flaps. I'm not sure if this airport has happy lights or not. I can't see any just yet. Continue going down around four or five hundred feet per minute. Let me see. Try to zoom in here, see if I can see these pappies. They do have pappies, okay. Right now it's four white, so we're high. Which is fine. Doesn't take a whole lot for this. Uh, don't take a whole lot of runway to stop this guy. So I can see the pappies. Oops, still high. It looks like. It's all right. Looks to be lined up pretty well on the runway. Oops. I think I'm seeing a red light now. Okay, now I'm seeing four red, so. Moving from too high to too low. Okay, we've got one, one white, three reds. Try to continue this to get two whites, two reds. Never know if there's any obstacles on the runway, or not on the runway, but on, near the runway. So I'm gonna try to keep two and two. All right, so we're back on path. Good. Start lowering the throttle a little bit. Speed down. Not really sure what the landing speed is in this aircraft. I assume somewhere in the lower white brat white area here on this airspeed indicator. All right. Idle thrusts back to its all horn oh, no shoot oops well tires didn't pop that's a good thing okay we're down ouch tax light can go on lane light can go off i'll have to have the struts checked on this thing took out the power just too early okay clear on the left clear on the right no traffic take a break right here and head to that GA parking over there uh, shoot uh, without my mouse I don't know how I'll be able to end the flight Is that, that's a oh wow that's a forklift and he, he's hauling butt it's pretty fast I'll pull in where those two gentlemen are right there. All right. Oh, sweet. We're done. All right. We did it. That's awesome. 
So that was fun. That was fun trying to follow the water and follow the road. Um, I can't wait to do the next one. So thanks so much for sticking around. And if you like what you saw, please click that uh, like button and subscribe so you can and click the bell notification so you know when I do another one of these trips. So thanks so much again for sticking around. We'll see you next time.